and welcome again ladies and gentlemen this time for the second match of the best of five castle story tournament finale this time we are on komorabi last time not non lil not non lil kill green won on kairos against his opponent his opponent and his map pick which was krukov's map pick and well his defeat so now we can see him using a similar strategy to what his opponent did before. So I'm curious to see how this is going to end up. But right now we are on Komorebi. Last time we were here it was for the semi-finals. And actually both of them I believe. No, actually only for one of them. The other one was quarterfinals. Because Komorebi is not non lol kills pick. So green picked this map. And actually he played on this map in the quarterfinals and in the semifinals and both of those matches he won. So the question is going to be will he win again on his pick? Will his luck or maybe his skill set continue? Or will his opponent Kriukov, who only played this map in the quarterfinals against Karatel, be able to win again as he did against Karatel? Or will he lose for the first time on this map which well, he only played once, but he won, and his opponent played twice, but won two. So, we have the five minutes non-aggression phase. We are, well, already down a bit on it, obviously. But, uh, so, this is the workshop edited Komorebi map. The vanilla one has two more crystals shards here, but w obviously we needed uh, two more player spawns. So, this is why those two extra crystals have been deleted in favor of those uh, fake player spawns well fake they aren't fake if the players would spawn here but it doesn't happen so and they have been replaced because normally all this area is closed off so it doesn't uh, appear here but then uh, yeah there we are <laughs> and uh, overall this map is pretty balanced also called the donut in some places uh, because, well, first of all, if you go out of your base, out of your spawn, you have one crystal in front. Just one, it's as simple as that. And then you can obviously go to the middle, but there are two crystals there and there's no direct passage. Or there's the one at the edges. So, to which will you go? This is a question which uh, the players will have to answer. But yeah, last time out, we didn't see a rush or anything of the sort. We saw already, not non local, directly after the end of the non aggression phase, pump out the conquering ward. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, we had Kriukov pumping out a sentinel. So the question is going to be will they be able to do the same? Or will they maybe even try to do a rush this time? Because to be honest, it might be worth it. Because, yeah, if your opponent might or might not be able to do it, maybe you will try to do the same strategy again. So now, obviously, both players will have to focus the fight around the middle. So far on this map we saw many rushes and actually not the local won both of his matches basically by harassing his enemy to the death. By simply putting a bunch of halberdiers coming into the base, attacking, leaving, attacking, leaving, attacking, leaving. So maybe he's going to do the same this time with Krukov. Although Krukov seems to be already putting up his defensive wall around here, uh, on top of which he's going to place a sentinel. So the question is, yeah, will he have, like, he has two sentinels already. So this seems, if you put two sentinels on top, this might already stop any rush you had planned. But maybe if his opponent is able to send a walker with them he might be able to destroy the stones and which will be a huge setback for him so right now let's just check in the kits so we have still one minute and 40 seconds to go so i will try to send a reminder at one minute so we have two four eight lances and only well wait only four helmets this is surprising okay but he there's still time for him to pump him out and he has the two sentinels and the healing ward so you know but his opponent in the meantime already has yeah five helmets uh and eight lances so five kits versus well three four and now he tried to j make him jump but i don't think that he wanted to very curious because well cast sorry there we go there he does the rambo landing and one minute we are at the one minute mark right now and now 
so this was the strategy which uh, not my local green used last time so basically in the rule it is stated pretty pretty clearly it is forbidden to make your crystal float this does not count as making your crystal float because there's still a connection underneath and well it's not floating simply as said because there's still a connection and also there's still the range so right now he's putting two sentinels down there in the middle this time last time he only put one sentinel and one conquering ward maybe we're going to see well he already put down his first conquering ward around here and he's doing the same trench system as before so very interesting stuff so i'm just going to get ready So after the non-aggression phase, it's over. Actually, what are we seeing here? We are seeing five red dots. It's incredible. I'm having to post this up and now I have to set the timer. Oh my God, what is happening? Is he already rushing him? So there are five people. Yeah, Kryukov, before even the timer ended, he already had all his people equipped. And now actually did uh, not on no kill see him. But now we are seeing here an uh, early rush. Six halberdiers coming in hot for the base of his opponent. Actually, he has enough kids to defend his people. He has one more conquering ward. But will he see from the side? Actually, this worker spotted them. So now he's having to call everyone to weapon. It's an incredibly early game rush strategy. Kryukov with the response to the loss of the previous match. But now the Sentinel there spraying away his opponents and actually not on local doing the same thing he did in the last match to win the tournament well the first match um he put one of his halberdiers around the base going to see what's happening in his opponent's base and now he's having to call everyone to the weapons there are no more kids ready he's even putting one helmet down so now he can equip the people but the worker dropped the helmet what is happening now brawl all over the base and actually he uses his own stuff as his defense and actually this worker has to put up the helmet put it in the rack and then equip it so that he has and actually one of them already died, Dingo died, so one of uh, Krukov's, uh, Krukov's help ideas died, but now one other one is coming down here. And he's trying to destroy this crystal, but he doesn't, isn't able to do it. And actually where is, where is the other worker, the other halberdier who was sent out? Because now I'm seeing one, two, three, five, six, seven people in the base, but there's no one death dead, so actually it might have worked. And actually... Now, seven halberdiers pursuing back four halberdiers and one halberdier here in the middle. So this halberdier is trying to <laughs> destroy... To come down here to just destroy the block below the conquering ward. But actually, Krukov calling all of his people back to the base. Trying to lure his opponent maybe into a false sense of security or in a false direction. But actually, meanwhile, uh, Krukov coming out with another conquering ward to equalize his opponent's advantage. And now, all the five... Uh, yeah, five of his halberdiers reacting, but not the local ready with six, hal six halberdiers as a response. Now his people are not in formation, so they will be less effective and there are two on the other side. So actually if Kukov manages to kill only one, it will be equalized uh, concerning the amount of halberdiers. And actually notice, not the local doesn't have any more halberdier kits, so now he's going over here destroying it. But actually he's in a dead angle and he's conquering his opponent's crystal, so he might do the same thing he did before again. Now Kukov is having to call back his people all of his all over oh he might lose the match as simple as that and now he has five halberdiers in the advance because he's defending but actually he might win the second match because there's one worker who is rushing back to, to kill the halberdier but actually now he's running around trying to destroy the healing ward and now actually it didn't work so close to losing Kriokov again but actually this one halberdier is now having to fall back and he's going to get shot at by the sentinels but actually he's trying to lure this enemy halberdier out but luckily for Kryukov he had one more uh, halberdier kit in his base and he has even a second one because on the other side not the low kill only has uh, one kit in reserve right now so yeah actually he's putting is he putting down no he's picking up all of his web weapons and all of his gears but now there are five halberdiers coming over here and actually yeah this is a trick uh, which you have to know with not the local he might be he might be into the sneak attack he might be going around the base and actually we can see it here there's this other halberdier being pursued by his opponent so uh Krukov not trying to let it slide easily that his opponent almost won the, f the second match against him with a sneak attack 
And now it's an overall big brawl, but I think not none of the Halberdiers is going to die because Shrikov called him back already. And now, uh, yeah, not the local calling everyone back to the base and the Sentinels are going to shield the rest of them. So they are just going to stay here. And actually we can see that the one Sentinel, actually Krukov's, um Krukov's Bane, we could call it, I think, because not the local strategy in the finale might be a game-changing plot twist because he wasn't able to destroy this conquering ward yet, or even though the five... Uh, yeah, his five um, halberdiers were, were around it for a long time. So now he's trying to cage his opponent a bit in, but actually the problem is there are yeah, five halberdiers who are just full health. And actually there's this other one around here still lurking inside of his base. And actually he's shielding them with one other halberdier in the base, similar to what he does. But now he's just going, coming back. The question is, will he try to destroy maybe a stone? Or actually he's just sneaking by everyone here in the base. And just because, yeah, this one, this work, uh, this Albadi is on defensive function, so he will not be paying any attention because, meanwhile, here's this. Here is the other attack coming because Not on Local is defending his base, and while they're running forth and back, he's in the base and just going to destroy everything there is because his opponent didn't notice it. And actually, now he notices it and now he's starting to attack his opponent, and I think this worker will be joining the fight too. Actually, this might be the loss of one of his. Halbadius will not on local. No, he doesn't. So this Halbadius is dead in a, his enemy's base. And now both of them lost one of them for sure. All of the stones here are despawning. And the thing is, in order to destroy this conquering, what you either need to attack it or to destroy the brick, the stone, well, the, 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 the earth, the soil below it. And now Krukov is going here with an all-out offensive into his opponent's base. And now actually, not on local is pushing back. So now it's a 5 versus 4, but actually the, the longer he waits, the worse it's going to be, because now two Halberdiers, even three Halberdiers, who were inside of his base, uh, nope, not this one, who were inside of the base defending from his enemy's sneak attack, now they will be able to join the fight. So now we have three Halberdiers over here, we have, uh, oh my god, four Halberdiers over here, so seven in total, and there are only five Halberdiers on the other side, so actually Krukov might be able to push his advantage, I said it before, but so far, both of them are 4-1 victory since the semi-finals. I would be surprised if there would be a 3-0 victory from one of them. So actually Krukov proving this point, fighting back, saying, you know what, you won the first match, but I'm going to do everything I can to win the second match. And it was already close for him once. But now, actually, as he's pursuing those three Halberdiers, four others are coming. And the question is, will he be able to just destroy everything this is this is like his biggest problem and actually it looks like not the local is trying to rush his opponent's base meanwhile his opponent is rushing his base so now there are four halberdies in the base so the question is will they be able to destroy well the sentinels but actually it doesn't look like it because in the meantime not the local is rushing his opponent's base so there are only two uh, two sentinels there, but the same is goes for his base, because now there's one Halberdier there, and Krukov opting for the defensive instead of the offensive, so now he's just rushing the base, and just rushing the crystal as well, destroying the furnaces, and destroying everything to get access, but now Krukov is coming back inside of the base, having to, well, basically defend his base, simply, simple as that. The question is, even, will he be able to do enough damage that it's will, that's going to be worthwhile, because not the local notice, he has less Halberdiers overall, so he has to do something radical, something bold and this is exactly what he's going he, he's doing he's going for the crystal and actually yeah his opponent decided to go for the defensive strategy but now they're all out fighting here in the base Krukov is calling one and even two of his people back but the not the local is still having four hold ideas running through the bases we can de depict them because they have the green uh necklace i want to say but it's uh well but yeah, now they are running back, so not the local's offensive a second time was defeated. Krukov learning from his mistakes before, and now I think there might be a worker rush coming somewhere. So now, yeah, the one Halberdier even pursuing them, so actually only four Halberdiers left, but there's still this one in the base doing much <laughs> harm because Krukov didn't fall back with all of his peoples. And now we can see many stuff already, like a stockpile, production site, despawned, and he's just going to hit everything he can because the worker is having to come back now but the thing is yeah what what are you going to do if there's nothing in the base to which you can put your weapons down or even like this so he will the worker will have to attack him but now the halberdiers are back here to help and actually the thing is now there's only one um one war drop there so actually not everyone can put down the weapons did he manage to no he did not manage to destroy any more th 
things and there's only one Halberdier kit back in the base and now Krukov assembling his forces so he is having six Halberdiers in front of his opponent's base who only has four kits and most importantly he doesn't have anything else in those four kits so he could he couldn't even put all of them down if he wanted to so there's another kit now so I think he's going to go for a second kit now because then he's going to have six people equipped with six Halberdier kits but one of them is actually really low and he has no healing ward right now or it was destroyed so the thing is again his base using uh huge disadvantage right now and the thing is his base is getting destroyed so he still has one kit here so actually it might be worthwhile for one of the people to use it but now he has six halberdiers and only if if his opponent manages to destroy this this might be a huge problem for him because if he destroys this uh, this wardrobe this uh, I forgot the name I'm sorry but if he manages to destroy it he cannot put down his kits and therefore he can lose any more resources or anything as long as another worker doesn't spawn so what is this going to be a huge problem for him actually I know there are only the six halberdiers in front of his base you can see that everyone is low on health everyone has been hit and now he's sending out this one before and he's able to be in the dead spot of those two sentinels and actually we can see this is the drawback of not the local strategy Using your crystal as a base and like this to put like uh, sentinels on it works. The problem is, yeah, they have many dead spots and actually one other of his, one other halberdier of his died. But actually this might be an advantage because now he's able to respawn one of his workers and so he can have one who works. But actually the thing is, another halberdier just died and will he be targeted once more? A two halberdiers died. So this is turning into a nightmare scenario. One of them each died. But actually, right now, only four kits against five kits. And even if they are low on health, there's nothing he can do to stop this. And now, actually, at least the advantage he has is that the Sentinels can start firing on a more open field on his opponent. But this doesn't stop it from having a huge issue. And actually, why was his crystal getting down? Okay, so that's why. Not on local, actually. Sneak attack, same as before. He's having one worker in his opponent's space, and if he doesn't notice it, and if this worker especially doesn't pick up a kit and drive him out, he might just lose because he has one of his worker inside the enemy base. So Krukov once more, not knowing how close he is to losing this match, because actually it might be losing because the worker is nowhere nearby. It's going to be a loss, and actually not the local won the second match the same time he won the first one by conquering his enemy's crystal by an incredible sneak attack, even though he was at a huge disadvantage.